Hi friends, it's Reverend Laurie Gist with Unity of Ocala for this Friday's Love Notes on this perfect October morning. Is it the 14th today? Maybe the 15th? I've lost track. It is gorgeous outside. I almost didn't want to come in to do Love Notes, but I want to because I am rereading one of my spiritual Bibles. It is Michael Singer's, Mickey Singer's, The Untethered Soul. Many of you have read this. Many of you have read it many times, like me. Many of you have taken classes on this or read this book in a book club or book study. I like to go through it at least every season when change is in the air, because I know with season changes, the things that are changing on earth are also changing in us. And I want to share with you a little bit of chapter eight. It's called, <laughs> this is a perfect time of year to read this chapter, folks. Let go now or fall. <laughs> I want to read you this first paragraph. So listen to this intentionally to get out of it what you need to hear today, because this is powerful. Let go now or fall. The exploration of self, capital S, is inextricably interwoven with the unfolding of one's life. The natural ups and downs of life can either generate personal growth or create personal fears. That's what's happening all the time. Change is bringing about growth or fear, growth and fear. Which of these dominates is completely dependent upon how we view change? Change can be viewed as either exciting or frightening, but regardless of how we view it, we must all face the fact that change is the very nature of life. If you have a lot of fear, you won't like change. You'll try to create a world around you that is predictable, controllable, and definable. You're trying to do that in your mind right now, aren't you? You'll try to create a world that doesn't stimulate your fears. This is all just hiding, you know. Fear doesn't want to feel itself. It's actually afraid of itself. That in you, fear that is in you, does not want to feel itself. Fear is afraid of fear. So you utilize the mind in an attempt to manipulate life for the purpose of not feeling fear. How many times have you gone way out of your way to avoid any feelings of fear? People don't understand, this is key, people don't understand fear is a thing. Fear is a thing. It's just another object in the universe that you are capable of experiencing. That's all. Just another thing in the universe that you are capable of experiencing. You can do one of two things with fear. You can recognize that you have it. Oh, hello, fear. How you doing? And work to release it. Or you can keep it and try to hide from it. It's not going away if you're hiding from it. It's still there if you're hiding from it, if you're hiding from it. Because people don't deal with fear objectively, they don't understand it. They, keep, they end up keeping their fear and trying to prevent things from happening that would stimulate it. This is so true. This is what we do. And then that fear just grows and it spills out at the most inopportune times when it is really not welcome, not appropriate. Have you ever noticed people who are afraid of everything? They've been running from their fear for so long, they don't realize that not only has the fear caught up with them, it's blocking them, it's smothering them, it's surrounding them, it's tripping them. It's all over them. They go through life attempting to create safety and control by defining how they need life to be in order to be okay. This is how the world becomes frightening. We're going to talk a little bit more about this on Sunday, but I want you to think about that. Are you trying to control 
the world around you so you don't experience fear. You're trying to decide what's not going to work and what has to be a certain way so you don't experience this fear. Are you fearing things that have never happened? Fearing things that happened a long time ago? Fearing things that could never happen? Fearing things that might happen and may and probably will? Why are you doing that to yourself? That's what we're going to explore in this beautiful book of how to let go and how to really show up in full grace, in full abandonment, in full authenticity, without fighting with fear, recognizing it. Saying hello. I got you. You're okay. Now goodbye. Not letting it to control you. I have a kitty here that wants my attention because I had to move his cat bowl because it's been attracting ants and I keep it spotless. I scrub it every day. I get rid of the food as soon as he eats it. And for some reason, the ants found it anyway. So my little messy boy. And it's because when he eats, he does this and it goes all over. Yes, you, I'm talking to you. You're not paying any attention. You're trying to be clever. You're trying to be cute. Anyways, this cat is afraid that I'm not going to feed it. And instead of hiding from its fear, it is bullying me. <laughs> Anyways, ah, cat's food behave. I wanted to end with a poem that I am just going to pick, and this will be the perfect poem, not that one because it already had a marker in it. Oh, let's read this one. Claustrophobic. <laughs> God's been getting a bit claustrophobic in the tight confines of your heart. Look out. She might bring grief, loss, any form of heartbreak to crack things open, get a little more spacious, to accommodate her wider dance. Oh, well, that fits right in. That fear that you're feeling might just be God getting a bit claustrophobic, ready to burst open some new space in your heart. I love it. Thank you, God, for that gift. I'll see you Sunday. I love you. God loves you. Bye.